We continue Summer of the Dead, and you've got Red on you. With Shaun of the Dead from 2004. It's time to get radical. <laughs> Ensure all residences are secure with all doors and windows firmly locked and barricaded. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Not people. Brains. They're us. We're them. They're us. Oh my god. You are dead. Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. The pain of being dead. Were you bitten? Uh, Were you bitten? Did any of the blood get in your mouth? They have overrun us, you know. We're in the minority now. Something like 400,000 to one by my calculation. The father, my father, always say, when the earth spit out the dead, they will come back to suck the blood from the living. When there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. There's another one for the fire. Hey, Radical Ones, welcome back to the Radical Retro Rewind Podcast. As always, I am your host, Radical Ryan Hunter, and I am joined by co-host Rob, the movie geek, for 2004's Shaun of the Dead. Two weeks in a row, Rob, we are doing UK exports. Oh, this is a UK, yes, that's right, that's right. (laughs) So, we kind of discussed this in 28 Days Later last week. And you didn't remember if you watched the movie, seen parts of it, possibly might have seen it. Did you realize anything? Did you see this movie? Did you not see this movie prior? After watching it, I'm going to say that I hadn't watched it all the way through. The Winchester stuff, I remember. Anything in between discovering the woman in the garden to Winchester, I don't know. I didn't know anything. I didn't remember any of that journey. I only remember the Winchester and the garden. That's it anything before and after that i yeah so most of it was still new actually did you happen to see because this is part of a trilogy i mean the movies aren't linked but it's called the three flavors cornetto it's based on an ice cream that edgar wright usually used when he was hung over or something so that's how this whole thing came about so it's that hot fuzz which is a cop i saw hot fuzz i own hot fuzz oh so you own hot fuzz yeah do i watch it all the time no but you know back in the day when you work at blockbuster movies are super cheap so you just buy whatever you want (laughs) even if you don't like it or never watch it you just buy it and so i did buy hot fuzz and i watched it maybe twice in my life but i own it it's it's a fun movie i actually i really enjoy that movie and i have to say sometimes better than Shaun of the dead which is i really do love i think it's better than Shaun of the dead only because there's like a small mystery in there and that's always going to be top over anything so it's true it's true and then the world's end which honestly i saw a saw i saw once rob i saw it once <laughs> <laughs> and it was not <laughs> what i was expecting for this that's the one that i need to see but i keep thinking there's like another movie out there with the literal exact same plot is world's end the one or maybe i've been confusing it with Shaun of the dead this whole time because i just remember them ending in a bar dealing with shit this one is aliens right it's aliens but it does have to do with a a bar crawl but there's that also that american movie made with simon pegg and nick frost where they kind of had an alien plot too that was well there's paul is there another one paul Paul, that's what i'm thinking so it's paul or this or world's end because they're both aliens but they did they have to stay drunk in order to not get possessed or something is that is that the one you know what that might have been actually because i only saw it once but i remember yeah part of that bar crawl and and then their friends didn't get taken over? That's a great question. I need to revisit that one. I remember leaving the movie theaters and going, eh? Because to me, Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz were were just amazing. Okay, sorry. I had to look this up, and I finally have an answer to it. So the movie that I have been, like, low-key really interested in watching and just never saw was the one where they discover that to avoid being taken over by aliens, they have to stay drunk. They have to get drunk and stay drunk in order to survive. So the whole movie is just these drunken fools trying to survive, like, an invasion. And it's not World's End. 
What I, is I guess it? in World's End, they just want to reach to the end of the bar crawl, at least just for some kind of satisfaction. Yeah. I have no idea. But the one that I'm talking about is called Grabbers from 2012. Yes. And I believe that Grabbers is also UK, maybe Irish. Let me. It does look like. Yes. Or its origin is Ireland and, and UK. So, yeah, this movie I have been low key interested in, and I always get them mixed up with World's End. Like we just did here, because I'm like, yeah, that sounds like the plot of that one. So, what was there in a breakout of alien movies for a short time again in the 2000s that we, we just glanced over? <laughs> Must have. Well, now I can finally put Grabbers on my list, but maybe I'll do World's End to complete the trilogy. I think it goes down from Hot Fuzz. But again, Again, I am biased. I'm biased. Do you ever think that modern life is not for you? Do you do the same dead end job every day? Is your love life dying on its feet? To a wonderful mom. Oh. oh. Have you ever felt that you're turning into something in the world? A zombie. Maybe you're not alone. Piss it. Although no one official is prepared to comment, religious groups are calling it Judgment Day. It is vital that you stay in your homes and avoid all physical contact with the assailants. So, what's the plan? Oh! Bash him in the head, that seems to work out. Why have we got a girl Lizzie? <sighs> because I love her. All right, gay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> something! Right there. Uh, hold it there. I'm coming! Oh. Here they come! <laughs> So, Rob, the movie begins with Dawn of the Dead music from 1978. Did you happen to recognize any of those cues? I recognized the music at the end. I did not recognize it in the beginning. So I know that you would notice more of that. And also, it even took me a short while to realize that this is sort of a remake or sort of a, an outline blueprint of Dawn of the Dead. Because they kept talking about Winchester, like, this is where we always go. And then when they were trying to figure out what's the safest place they could go to. And they were like, somewhere familiar and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that's exactly what Romero was bitching about in Dawn of the Dead. And so I was like, okay, this is a Dawn of the Dead mock-up. And I, I should have known better. I thought it was just a zombie movie, but I sh really should have known better. And I know the title is, it's not as oblivious as I'm making it out to be. I did see the correlation, but I didn't know that the movie was literally going to follow the footsteps of the film in some ways. Definitely homage to it. But you're right, Shaun of the Dead could have been any of the dead movies. That kind of sounds like blank of the dead. So who faults you for that? This is a zombie comedy film directed by Edgar Wright and written by Wright and Simon Pegg. Simon stars as Sean, a downtrodden salesman in London who is caught in a zombie apocalypse with his friend Ed, Nick Frost. And that is where we start our journey. This was part of the 2004 zombie resurgence, I always call it. Dawn of the Dead remake, speaking of that, and Shaun of the Dead, which, as we spoke about last week, Rob, really has to do with 28 Days Later bringing the zombie genre back from the dead. We've done a few horror comedy movies. What are your takes on that? Are, are you okay with the mix? Or do you want a little more of each element? Like, would you rather have more of the horror? No, no. Horror comedy is actually my favorite, to be honest, next to anthology. Uh, I mean, I love a good scare, and horror movies are great, but horror comedies are always 
fun to rewatch or even connect to because it's more on the geeky side if i'm not mistaken because most horror comedies will refer to what the viewer knows about horror movies they just kind of like either in a meta way bring up the halloween the halloween the hollywood tropes yeah. of horror films and you know bring up other movies in the genre and stuff like that so i like horror comedies i i don't think that they i don't think they run out of steam i i think they just continue to get better and better in my opinion and i always look forward to them so and i think with horror comedies you have more leg room more you can take more risks yeah. and stuff because you're not taking it as seriously so and it's also a great way to introduce the genre to other people who don't really like horror to begin with although this movie was pretty gory yeah it was it really was but you're right this is a great gateway i feel like to zombie movies and the comedy i have to say is as strong for me as the the macabre as they would say well hopefully by the end of this episode we will figure out if dogs can really look up <laughs> yes yes which I think is one of the craziest lines in this whole movie. I want to say that this film is also very whimsical. Would you describe it as that? I think even just from the beginning, past these, the Dawn of the Dead music, when we get into this intro sequence, when they're showing the people are almost as zombies, and we have that wah, 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 yeah, kind of music, it's, happy. <laughs> it's very Edgar Wright. I mean, this is the kind of stuff he does, you know, text along the you know structure of the, of the city. That's what he does. And <laughs> everybody's dancing but also acting very zombie like with their lives you know the mundane and and constant repetitiveness of you know the the checkers at the supermarket and all that stuff and i'll say this if you happen to work in retail customer service or even like admin work you have to kind of dress up to go to work every day like that stands out as being a very repetitive feeling like a zombie yes. dead, you know, just working mindlessly over the same stuff without anything different. It it really showcases that in the beginning here, everyone on the bus, barely awake, you know, yeah. not enough sleep, having to get up in the morning, you know, like it showcased all of that. So even before the apocalypse, you know, you're shown that our lives were just walking mindlessly, just doing whatever, right? <laughs> and Sean is like oblivious to every surrounding to him that even when the zombies do come later on, he does the same walk to his house, like you were saying, in the morning, half asleep, not paying attention to what's going on around him. But yeah, looking catatonic and, and you know, just lifeless was very nice. And, and also great attention to detail to just start from the beginning and just really showcase and foreshadow like what's going on, even in little, small and subtle ways. So yeah, the beginning and opening was great. As you said, whimsical. I mean, you don't really expect that from a horror movie, but this no. is a horror comedy, so it makes sense. I feel like it transcends both really good because I could compare this to, let's say, Return of the Living Dead that we did earlier, which always has comedy elements, but it maintains like a darker tone. I think this one is just really able to blend the two beautifully, like that title sequence. This director, Edgar Wright and writer, he is real, I mean, details like Rob is saying, holy crap, we found out earlier on, I sent Rob this video where the details in the rug in one of the first shots of Sean when he's waking up literally foreshadows the end movie around the bar. I mean, this is deep. This is deeper than I've ever thought. I knew he was good on Easter eggs and little hidden things like that, but the rug? <laughs> yeah, he's really good at that. I watched this shortcut video of all the Easter eggs you can see in Scott Pilgrim, and he does little things like that as far as decor and, and stuff. I think there was a time... Uh, in Scott Pilgrim where they're walking down the street and then you can see this overview of like street lights or whatever and then some of them had X's and I think some of them had like green as go or whatever the X's represented how many X's he's already gone through at that point of the wow movie. Like, it, wow. It, like he's really good at paying attention to those little things and I think for hardcore fans those are for that's what they're for they're for them so yeah, I wouldn't have noticed that at all. I just noticed the zombie feet, how he was walking, making it look like he was already there. 
I do enjoy the slow burn and subtlety of the ZA as the day goes by and the fact that, you know, Sean is sort of just out of tune with, you know, things that are happening around him. And and I, I enjoyed all that, you know, just even down to the bloody hand on the glass case at the store that he didn't notice at all. I was like, what is happening, Sean? What? Like, you really don't give a shit about anything to not even notice that. But yeah, I, I like how it slowly just lets you know and another Edgar Wright thing that I really enjoyed too, I don't know if you noticed this, as he was flipping through channels trying to find something to watch, every single word, regardless what channel he was on, all said a cohesive sentence Amazing. talking about the apocalypse. And I just think that was so cool and funny <laughs> to notice. But yeah. The uh, wild animals when eaten alive is perfect. Although no one official is prepared to comment, religious groups are calling it Judgment Day. There's as an increasing number of reports of serious attacks on people who are literally being eaten alive a witness reports are sketchy one unifying detail seems to be that the attackers in many instances appear to be dead excited to have with us here Ace. we're introduced to you know simon and nick and you know sean and and ed as well as the rest of the group uh, Liz, Diane, and David. And you know Diane, Miss Lucy Davis. First off, I love her character in this, but I feel like I just love her because of, yes, what she's done in the past. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, so Simon and, you know, and Nick, they are, you know, kind of best buds, I guess, or I guess they just have a very good chemistry and same sense of humor that it's good that those two found each other because they're able to understand <laughs> one another. But it seems that. Simon is lacking, I guess, zest for life or a way to really look into the future and stop being a quote unquote man child. I don't know if they actually use that specific phrase, but you know, he's a guy that likes to play video games. He doesn't really like responsibility. And you know, I, I guess you can say no direction, but he likes the way things are. Yeah. He doesn't like to change much. He finds what he likes. And he's happy and content with just that. But he has a girlfriend who wants more out of life, a little bit of a shakeup. Her Their relationship is getting pretty stale, but they've been together for a long time. So kudos to her for, you know, sticking with him for that long. But I guess she's reached a real breaking point, like their anniversary is coming up and she wants to do something different. But he is just so gung-ho on keeping things the same. Sure. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Totally. I know he's your best friend, but you do live with him. I know. It's not that I don't like Ed. Ed, it's not that I don't like you. Sorry? Well, I mean, it's not that I don't like David and Di, you know. Guys, it's not that I don't like you. Sorry. Right. And it's not that I don't want to spend time with you, because I do. It's just... Ed doesn't have too many friends. That scene where they introduce Sean and Liz and they're talking to each other, Rob, and she goes, it's not that I don't like Ed. And then you pan over and you see that he's actually standing there. And then they mimic it a few minutes later with her friends on the other end, I think is, is genius. It's not that I don't like you guys. I think that's really realistic, right? I feel like there are people out there who have these kind of friends in their lives that they they're almost afraid to maybe outgrow, but they to to be able to be the best they can, they really do have to let them go in a way. Well, I mean, at least set some boundaries. Nobody said that they had to stop being friends, but if you're going to constantly cater to Ed who constantly wants him to revert and not move forward, then yeah, you probably need to break apart, but like Ed also just has an issue with creating his own life and identity. Well, look, I've known him since primary school. You know, I like having him around. He's a laugh. What, because he can impersonate an orangutan? Fuck a doodle do. I'll leave him alone. All right, I admit, he can be pretty funny on occasion. Like that time we stayed up all night drinking apple schnapps and playing Tekken 2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when was that? That was five years ago. When's he going home? You know, granted that this is a horror comedy and we're going to be dealing with a lot of sort of like unrealistic things as far as like decision making and what people are going to do in, in regards to how to handle the ZA. Ed is the worst. He is literally the worst. I I don't hate the man, but he was he was just literally useless. And I understand that he was 
sort of the cause of a lot of the drama that continued to come at them because he just could not think smartly about stuff. It just, like, some of the decisions he was making, I found it hard to laugh at because I was just like, you're so horrible. Like, I would hate to have been in this real-life situation with you in it. One big thing for me that really stands out is that because he wanted to drive the Jack so much, he destroyed a capable and durable vehicle and just ran it into a pole, got rid of a second car that they could have used because he wanted to drive the Jaguar so bad. I, I can't even find that funny. I was like, you're dumb. You are so stupid. I can't. I would never be able to put up with this kind of person in my life. But I will say maybe because I've seen the movie so much. Like you said, Rob, I don't hate him. I think there's something like about him that I like. Maybe because I like Nick's performance. And especially, I really like- oh, his performance is great. Right? I mean, the two of them in Hot Fuzz, I, I love their dynamic. And he plays the complete opposite in Hot Fuzz, which is great, Nick, to see him in that kind of role. So I don't know what Ed really brings to Sean's life besides levity and him being able to hold on to maybe childhood and not having to have grown man's business and having to do things like that. But I mean, there comes a point, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Again, aside from that, you know, their chemistry is great and, and Ed does bring some of the comedy in, in this yeah. movie. Okay. So you also sent me a video in regards to how they use the term gay back in 2004. And, you know, now obviously that joke has not aged well at all. But then in this video that you sent me was the two of them sort of remaking that discussion that they had over the phone on what the plan is on how to get to the Winchester. And they had brought up the joke and then Simon Pay goes on this long monologue to explain <laughs> why it was being used. And so, like, I kind of get it in a way. So he says that it was sort of to mock how the straight culture, you know, is sort of naive and, and ignorant about what it is that they're saying and then sort of like poking fun at those dumb ideals that straight people have in order to hold on to their masculinity. Like, all of that is fine if you gave it to a character that we're not supposed to like. And yes, I did not end up liking Ed, but at the same time, we're supposed to care about Ed and you're pointing out the hypocrisy of like, it's, it's just, it's just, I don't know. To me, I didn't feel that it needed to be used because then later in the movie, he uses the N word and I again is just like that's not funny and it's a literal throwaway line like they don't even bring it up ever again it's just something for him to say I was just like yes this is probably something his character would say and you're pointing it out in the film that these type of people are dumb and stupid or whatever but like again are we supposed to hate him or not because I feel that they were trying to pull at us when he met his demise and I just was oh like, definitely definitely so dude. I don't know I, I'm that part of the movie does not age well for me so yeah I mean their relationship is really like I said earlier I want to see what he brings to Sean besides he does try to pick him up of course when he has that breakup with Liz like you would hope a friend would do a, a good friend a best friend there's that one other moment I can think of in the Winchester when he gives him the beer and he's like maybe a little bit warm and then he goes thanks babe like that's the only that was, like, cute. That was very cute I did love that I did love that those are like cute instances when they're together so it, I, I don't know yeah they were they were straddling both sides but I will say I, I get a huge kick out of his whole crush or joke about Sean's mother over and over again like we're coming to get you Barbara was a haha -ha moment but <laughs> I love I was like I and I I wrote this down i was like his mom was named barbara just so that line <laughs> yeah, could be said right. and i thought it was great i thought it, and he said it in the right infliction too so again all of that stood out to me right away so i i love that line that was a great delivery and and yeah ed loves sean's mom like we're coming to get you shut up you're just gonna come with us and yeah she, she, he cared for her a lot yes that was that was very endearing so what's the plan Right. We take Pete's car, we drive over to Mum's, we go in, uh, we take care of Philip. I'm so sorry, Philip. Then we grab Mum, we go over to Liz's place, pull up, have a cup of tea, and wait for all this to blow over. Why have we got to go to Liz's? Because we do. But she dumped you. I have to know if she's alright. Why? Because I love her. Alright, gay. I'm not staying there though. Why not? 
If we hole up, I want to be somewhere familiar, I want to know where the exits are, and I want to be allowed to smoke. Okay. Take Pete's car, go round Mum's, go in, deal with Philip. Sorry, Philip. Grab Mum, go to Liz's, pick her up, bring her back here, have a cup of tea, and wait for all this to blow over. Perfect. No, 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 wait, we can't bring her back here. Why not? Well, it's not exactly safe, is it? Mm, yeah. The state of it. Where's safe? Where's familiar? Where can I smoke? <laughs> Take car, go to Mum's, kill Phil, sorry, grab Liz, go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for all this to blow over. How's that for a slice of fried gold? Yeah, boy! Vital that you stay in your homes, make no attempt to reach loved ones, and avoid all physical contact with the assailants. You believe everything you hear on TV? And then we had Philip, of course, the stepfather, Rob, which we had this whole arc with Sean. Bill Niley. Oh. God, he is comedic gold. I love Bill Niley so much. There was, I don't remember exactly when it happened. I don't know if it was. I think it might have been his first scene when he's at the electronic yeah. store and we get the introduction of him and he does this like turn to like showcase like, yep, it's me, Bill Niley. And I just, I just like the way he acts. He's just so delightful to watch. And I just, I just love him in this movie. He's so good. That stoic face and he's just looking all, you know, ah, yeah. Bill Niley is great. And yet you, you sort of with that moment of, of Sean hating his stepfather, you know, that's how it's portrayed, of course. But then we, when he has that death scene later on in the car, I got to give it to this whole film for being able to balance again, comedy, horror, and then sad moments like that. Sean. I turned it off. All right. It's not easy. What? Being a father is not easy. What? You were 12 when I met you. Already grown up so much. I just wanted you to be strong and, and not give up because you lost your dad. Philip, you don't have to explain, you know? No, I, d I do. I, I always loved you, Sean. And I always thought you had it in you to, to do well. And you just need motivation, so somebody to look up to and I, I thought it could be me just take care of your mom there's a good boy <laughs> hey, can you pull over it was a very sad moment and and simon really did feel bad that he had died even though he won't claim him as his father but like that final reveal and just sort of letting go of of whatever hostility and him just being like i've always loved you and all that i thought that was really nice but it was also funny when he tells his mom he's like look they're a zombie that's not philip anymore he's lost all human capacity like he's not the same man and then he leans over to turn the music down <laughs> he was dying i thought that was so funny i thought that was so funny sure we can't just leave your dad it's not my dad oh sure mom I, he was but He's not anymore. I really think you don't listen to me, Mum. Listen, that's not even your husband in there. Okay? I know it looks like him, but there is nothing of the man you loved in that car now. Nothing. Let's go, shall we? But yeah, that scene was also pretty creepy too because they were like, "Oh, he's dead." He was like, "No, he's not. He's awake." And you turn, and his oh. eyes are open, ready to. I was like, "Oh my god, get out of the car!" Very, very good. And and that was also a really nice surprise because I wasn't sure who. I, I didn't remember exactly who lived or died or just actually how it happened, put it that way. Uh, so I thought that was great. There is that one moment I just, before we get a fill up, and it always made me laugh, even though it's so terrible. When he's trying to tell his mother about Philip not liking Philip, and he says, Mom, when I was little, <laughs> no, it's not even so. He goes, Philip touched me. And then she's like, what? <laughs> and then he's like, oh, no. But I mean, it's. He's like, that's a lie. I'm not even going to try and stretch that out. You know, it's not true. <laughs> but she, he tried it. He God. tried it. Okay. So what is your take on the zombies? Let's talk about the zombies. Well, first off, I love that all the background people from the beginning of the movie were zombies on that second day. The guy with the tux, I think, is always creepy. The way he looks as a zombie. Mm -hmm. I actually really like the zombie because they kind of, I mean, they look 
look dead to me. The makeup is great. And I like that they're slow, Rob. I do like that they're slow. But they are kind of smart. They keep that intelligence in a way, almost like fill up with the radio. It's that memory. They remember things. So I like my old-fashioned zombies. I do. You know, for slow zombies, I find it hilarious that they were able to create so much damage in the city. So, like, we get an overview of, like, the city being damaged. Streets are empty. You know, a lot of people have been changed. But I'm just like, if they're so slow, like, how did the city get so damaged so quickly? I'm like, was it us just wrecking the whole place just because we're scared or was it the zombies oh. who did i just was like I, I didn't expect the city to just be so damaged if these are slow and zombies because you could just run around them i i just didn't understand compare the streets <laughs> too from last week's movie rob that was 28 days later after this apocalypse the streets were beautiful and <laughs> two days in this movie it's like nope you are in an apocalypse and it looks like it <laughs> I think for a horror comedy, it made sense that the zombies were slow and, you know, a little mindless or whatever, and a, a little bit impenetrable as well. Like, you really had to, like, dig deep into, like, killing yeah. them or whatnot. Uh, the makeup, like you said, was great. Also, I thought the acting, as far as acting like zombies, was pretty good, too. The moaning worked for me. I, I thought it, I thought the, the zombies in this were pretty cool. So this leads me to actually a great little trivia thing, Rob. So Simon Pegg was on a show called Spaced, which was a British sitcom. That led to Shaun of the Dead because there was a zombie-themed episode, the third episode in the series, that Simon's character Tim did speed, drank, and played Resident Evil, and then thought he was in a zombie apocalypse. So the fans of this sitcom on a message board were asked to come to play zombies and 1100 people showed up and Simon said they were paid a pound because they had to be given something for work but these were fans of the sitcom and they said this is one of those times when a message board being a member of like a fan community actually did something for you because you were invited to something like this. No that's pretty cool. I mean there are a lot of struggling actors out there who you know this is their living so of course they want to take on jobs that are going to pay them if they're going to use their time but a lot of people just want to be immortalized in a film get the experience and maybe even work with the star that they really admire so like i honestly would have done it for free me regardless. too me too and, and with this particular movie i would have totally done it for free and and i think it's 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 basically like a kickstarter we're making this movie you being in it makes it cheaper and affordable and we can get through the cost and be a part of of something cool and i i think that's awesome and rob do you know that character that sean keeps coming upon and then they have that scene where they have the similar group and they walk past their twins space ball-esque oh, i love them it's the stunt doubles <laughs> <laughs> you idiots these are not them you've captured their stunt doubles that actress was actually his co-star in this sitcom space. Oh, okay. Well, I also noticed Martin Freeman, who I don't know, I can't remember yeah, if he was so like weird. a big star by the time we saw this, or if he was just an extra, but I thought his cameo was amazing. So to see him was cool. But yeah, they had their own, you know, stunt double <laughs> scene there. I thought it was cool. Very the good. Um, even down to the umbrella for David with, with the umbrella. I love that. Oh my God. Shake out, get nice and limber, or not. Now, take another look at the way he moves. Remember, very limp. Almost like sleepwalking. Look at the face. It's vacant with a hint of sadness. Like drunk, he's lost a bed. Okay, let's try, shall we? Liz. Mm. Nice, good vocal work. Okay. Barbara, that's excellent. Sorry, dear, I was miles away. Daphs? Uh. Come on. Uh. Okay. It's mournful, sorrowful. You dead and you ate it. Go. Uh. Much better. Ed. I'll do it on the night. This is the night. <sighs> <laughs> what is that? What about yours? Hey? He died in my G fucking king of the zombies. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Right. Let's all try it together, shall we? One. Two, three. I just want to touch on that scene where Diane teaches them to act as zombies. Oh, they're I... so cute. Yes, yes. 
Diane, I think, is just a standout character. Again, I don't know if it's because she's a known actress from things, but every time she's on screen, Rob, I think she's delightful. And when she's teaching them to do zombies and they're all going through their, uh, uh, and when she gets to Sean's mother and she goes, Barbara, that was perfect. And she says that she was miles away. I left my, uh, I always do. So funny that this poor woman, she just naturally looks like a zombie. <laughs> I'm miles away, dear. What did you think about sort of the kills, the action and stuff? Was it too gory? I will say David's death is extremely gory for, I feel like, the rest of the movie. Like, you're not expecting, if you're expecting that, let's say, in Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, in this movie at that point, I would never expect it a torn apart body, but that's- Well, the, the girl in the garden was kind of fucked. Oh. Or, or messed up because just just what if she wasn't a zombie and all he did was just push her back and that's what, what happened like that like sucks oh my god like i i got taken aback with that and then they pulled a death becomes her i got love a it a hole it. through the center yeah. what do you think of that whole scene though speaking now that we you, you know we're talking about it when he goes she's a drunk in the garden there is a girl excuse me Excuse me. Hello. Oh my God. <laughs> She's so drunk. <laughs> Aren't you glad, Rob? <laughs> oh, I think she likes you. <laughs> I think she wants a cuddle. Oblivious, oblivious. <laughs> Throw in the yeah, records. I really wouldn't know what to do in that particular case. It just, you know, because you don't know what's going on. And Simon refuses to call them zombies. I don't know if it's just him letting go of reality and just being like, we're in the thick of it. But he really didn't want them to be called zombies. You know what that is, actually? I remember this from the commentary from, my God, when I was a teenager. It's because in, in Romero's movies, he usually doesn't say That's what I words. Thought. That's what I thought. So yep, he so. was just like, none of the Z, no Z yep. words. Just, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, no, I told you, and I kind of got a little bit of a hint like You're that. Like maybe it's because we don't call them that or they never know what a zombie is to begin with so you're not that's supposed true. to say it yeah but yeah that's so. good that you picked up on that but yes and that's a running one of those running themes too that you know it's brought up a few times we're not saying the Z word mm-hmm no, that totally makes sense. So throughout the film, Simon just literally flips on a switch. He takes Lee. He's taking charge. He is sort of good at killing zombies. Do you believe this immediate transformation? They don't necessarily showcase that this is a skill of his. Ed is the video game player. Even though Sean does play video games, it's just immediately he's just like, I'm responsible. Is it his love for Diane that kicks in? Or, you know, like... How do you how do you like that his transformation just immediately was like everything you do Ed is like so stupid and blah blah you're not gonna be like all of this stuff just starts happening and his life just con he starts doing the things that he said that he didn't really care to really you know take charge of his life and whatnot so do you believe in this like transformation you know I almost do I think it is part for Liz winning her over again. But I also think it was he had, it really hit him all at once. It was the breakup earlier with Liz, then the zombies, then fill up his mother. And then I think it's just Ed doing the stupidity of turning the music on blast and crashing the car, like you said. I think he did get fed up with him. And I really think it was like, we have to really survive. We have to grow up kind of moment. I think this whole day made Sean grow up. And I do think it was to get back the girl originally. But then I think he wanted to survive and he wanted to at least maybe Liz and who as much as he could could survive with him so he's like that unlikely hero that I wish we all could have inside of us that we could survive these things <laughs> it it reminded me a lot of zombie land because it yeah. involved characters who believe that in real life they just don't really amount to anything or to society yep. they're just kind of eating away resources and just like being blah but when the shit hits the fan you find out that you have this natural ability and skill of surviving and Woody Harrelson character and, and Eisenberg's character uh, they just discover like I'm good at this this is what I'm good at this is this is the life skill that uh, that exceeds more than others you know with this so I just thought that was great that Simon just always had it in him and he was able to do this and yet 
Like <laughs> maybe I have hope, Rob. Maybe my 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 hidden skills will come out if zombies came. Do you think you'd be able to survive this particular uh, ZA? Only if they're the slow zombies. Possibly. <laughs> I'll say possibly. If they were, I think Shaun of the Dead zombies are possible. Walking dead, crazy people on every street. Uh, maybe not so much. Mm, I would like to hope. <laughs> what about you? I mean, we know that you have the brains for like a slasher film to get the hell out of there. But it's just everything that happened in the Winchester. I don't know if I'd be able to survive that small location mm -hmm. and building. I don't know. Just the know-how of like boarding up the windows and everything. That to me, I think would be very difficult to do. But my zest for life to, you know, run away from them and do whatever. I think that I can come through as far as like taking a life. I want to say that I'm, I can do it. It just really depends. Uh, hopefully I'm strong enough to take them on if they ever get like a hold of me or whatever. But I, I don't know. I, I know that I would not be, is it David who was just chilling by a window the whole time? And I would have, de like, I would never be in, in, near any windows. I don't understand why he felt so comfortable to be around those windows like that. Never, never. Exactly. Windows are the place you avoid. Did you love their Mexican standoff? And and what's her face was like, this isn't fair. I'm not a part of it. And she gave her a bottle to <laughs> hold up against Sean's <laughs> neck so they can all participate. But, you know, a lot of the turmoil in the group had to do with relationships. I blame David for everything. Take oh, David, David is the one out. Take him out because Diane was going along with everything. Like she was even worried about Barbara when they did that thing with the gun. Oh, wait, you hold the gun now. No, wait, you hold the gun now. And then, uh, but then she went after him. So I don't know what the hell she was thinking with a leg. I was always praying that she would be at the end alive somewhere. <laughs> yeah, she was like, I'm coming for you. I think she honestly just is very codependent to to yes. David. I mean, that's why she stayed with him. She knew the truth, and yet she still wanted to be with him instead of being alone. So, yeah, she was not going to continue on without him. Nope. Nope. Within death, taking the leg. I think we can't not bring up the queen synchronized dance slash attack of the zombie with the jukebox to Don't Stop Me Now, which, that was oh my so god, good. gets me going, Rob. Every time, I'm like, jazz. That song in general, but then when they do the pool cubes all together in unison. <laughs> that was really funny. I wonder that... It I wonder if they knew that that what was happening I, or maybe it was just sort of like a meta thing just for us but it would have been funny if david or somebody was just kind of watching like you guys are on beat what is happening what are you doing why are we doing this on beat but no i thought that was great yeah, thank you for setting up my next trivia that was perfect matter of fact they did rob they knew that the song was going to be playing and because they couldn't have it playing while they were recording they had the song in their earbuds and they choreographed the whole sequence to go to the beat even they said david flicking the switches were supposed to be with the beat of the song too with the ding, ding. so so it's cool that they heard it in their ears and they had to try to synchronize themselves in the silence of everything yeah. else so i think it stands out as one of the best scenes of this movie fun it shows what this whole thing is about serious because it's zombie but then fun play play yeah. So I do want to mention at one point, Rob, there was a sequel planned and it was going to be called <laughs> From Dusk Till Sean, which is funny. Okay. And Sean would have one against a different type of monster, but then they realized that they didn't want to really tamper with the Sean of the Dead name. I mean, I guess we got this with the aliens later on with their third film, but I kind of would have liked to have this almost, again, the same characters. I'll do that Dark Shadows, as I always bring up, or American Horror Story, where you bring the same actors, but then you have them play different characters. I would thought that would have been really fun as an idea. Yeah, no, that does sound really interesting. I've always had this idea in my head of having like a character just sort of go through life in different genres in each movie, showcasing wow. a part of his life and just having it parallel. So like after a, a, a very dramatic and, and very, you know, altering life 
like yeah then happen you know what happens after a zombie apocalypse you mourn the people that you've lost which means his next movie could have easily been a drama and just having the character just go through each genre with its best director of that genre take lee it's sort of like that game when you start a story and you pass it along and you let somebody else finish it yeah just have oh. one character just go through like each genre and and deal with something different so yeah sean would have been a great character to explore in other in other ways especially since in this movie he kind of had that glow up or that grow up but honestly you're right with the way this movie ended they even could have brought ed back as this zombie that they have like maybe to they could have said maybe he could have gotten more intelligent because they kind of were repopulating the earth with the zombies but they were making them do i was gonna ask you what your take on that was and if there was sort of a message in being like okay here's our new normal and i guess the best thing to do with them is to make them work so <laughs> it still kind of feeds into the capitalism of things, you know, like, because we're always going to try and make AI and robots do jobs for us, right? Yeah. Because the human condition can't last forever and 24-7. So, like, the natural thing to do is either make the zombies weapons or to make them work for us. It's just a natural way. But I wonder if you caught on or noticed any kind of message with how the world adapted to to having the undead. Well, let me first just say, I think we're in danger because I can't even get the self-checkout to work correctly at the supermarket. So I don't know if that's the future of AI. <laughs> I think it's crazy because I, it's a nice way to have Ed stay alive and like these people again end on a whimsical note but i think keeping zombies around even if they i mean if they completely have no bite instinct to eat you i guess but after you just went through this whole thing where everyone died well actually i guess we don't know how many people died because people are still watching tv at the end what was that trisha with that woman who was in love with a zombie do you sleep with oh, him or she's yeah like, yeah the thing on on <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's just that's just how it is. You know, like we just find these new obsessions and fetishes and and, you know, things that we didn't know, but we're going to deal with it because we don't want to just say the world's ending. This is just a new way of of living life, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, that was a very interesting ending. What I thought it was doing was bleeding into Day of the Dead, which unfortunately I have not seen yet. But I know they talk about how zombies can be a good resource for the world if we just take our time and study them or whatever yes yes there is a scientist that was hoping to i i think teach basically one and see if they could spread that and to, to teach the other zombies i mean it's a good idea if you can't solve it maybe like if this is the only way of solving this i guess but i would always be worried i mean but we even see they're in game shows like it looked like ninja warrior almost mimicking earlier on when we saw the tvs and, and they were people playing those games and then now they're zombies playing these obstacle games the detail like rob is saying the detail in and Edgar Wright's work is just fantastic. I'm sure there's so many little nuances we miss with every part of this movie. But I think it's really genius, a lot of parts. And for a basically, not that this was the first thing that he did, but this was basically Simon Pegg's and Edgar Wright's like first movie. And to be able to be like a, a modern classic, honestly, it's described as at this point. So all in all, I still love Shaun of the Dead. So what were your thoughts? I mean, as a whole picture now with this film? Ah, uh, okay. So for me, I, I had a great time watching it. I thought it was... A, a very fun movie delight it was a little hard to get some of the humor that was going on uh the characters were definitely very hardcore with their truth they were bluntly honest with <laughs> one another which i also loved uh the the zombie take of it all i thought was great the action was fun uh great movement and i think that simon Pegg killed it as sort of taking lead and then also showing sort of the emotional transition between just being lazy and then becoming a leader but then also being very emotional and mourning his stepfather as well as mother in this movie and just being very in it you know yeah. like i i just think there were a lot of natural instincts that weren't necessarily showcased of him having it just sort of like i know this i just didn't want to try and i think a big part of it was like when he goes behind the bar they're all there and he thinks to just pour alcohol and Oh, yeah. Light up the bar so there is a fire force field around him. I don't, I wouldn't think that's, that 
Sean knew to do that. And it's just funny how all of this was always inside of him. And naturally, these ideas just come up out of nowhere, you know? Uh, it's not like they mentioned, like, he went to Boy Scouts or anything. They just... He just knew everything, and I, I just think that's good because it just shows, like, an action hero in the midst of this horror comedy. So I just really enjoyed all of sort of the visual effects of it and the quirkiness of Edgar Wright's direction, and I, I enjoy the characters. I was surprised that all of them, like, died. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's why I want Diane to still be roaming out there with a leg. Everything just kind of, like hit the fan and then they all died like real quickly uh the mom hiding her bite like i could tell immediately but i still don't understand why she waited she didn't I want to bother him that <laughs> she didn't no no not wait i'm sorry not waited to tell them but like when they were all running away from the neighbors she decides to stop and she goes oh i don't think the neighbors want us i'm like right what are you doing right. I, I said you know she was kind of left behind and then they saved her but it's like what were you doing it was weird but yeah, yeah, they had to kill her. They had to kill her off. I guess that's, and yeah. it was a sneaky way of doing it. I, I did enjoy it. I, I thought this movie was a lot of fun. What do you think really quickly as well about Liz and Sean's relationship? I actually liked that actress too. I think they were a quirky couple. I think they fit perfectly together. If they remain together till this day, let's see. But Their relationship was cool. I mean, she, she clearly saw things in him that weren't going to change. And she made a point to just let go. She was like, if you're not going to change for me, then we're done. I mean, I don't know if she was perfect herself, but it's just funny that all it took was for him to take lead on this. And I don't know if it was just her being more attracted to him because he was being more manly. But, yeah. he, but overall, it seemed that they grew even more. And, and so they decided to stay together. And that's great. He said, you don't want to die alone, like single, right? Or something like that. And then, but I think they were headed towards that anyway. I mean, yeah, he did. Uh, I guess he did grow up to be what she wanted him to do. So Rob, I looked as of July of this year, they were talking to Simon Pegg about a potential sequel of Shaun of the Dead. And he said, since most of the characters are dead, there's really no way to do one. So fair enough. There you go. I mean, I honestly don't need a, a direct sequel of them dealing with zombies again. Did we like the characters enough to see them in another adventure? Yeah. So the idea of them dealing with another sort of supernatural thing, I, I think would have been fun. But I don't need to see another zombie movie with them. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. Dealing with zombies. So yeah, let's take it even further. Maybe there's a colony or whatever they have to get to. But I I'm fine with just this standalone. I actually would have been excited with vampires if From Dust Till Sean was really what they were going for, like vampires. I would have liked that. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, that wraps up this week of the Radical Retro Rewind podcast. We got one more for the month, and that is another divisive title, I Am Legend. Can I defend that as a dead movie? We will see. <laughs> but if not, <laughs> it's still the last movie of this month, everybody. <laughs> Yes, do look forward to talking about that one. You can always find Rob here, but he does have an exclusive catalog, of course. Brunch with the Hollowells, the Complete Charm series, as well as a Movie Geek and Proud, a movie review podcast, and Fear Bias, which is a horror podcast with his friend, Nate, which currently has Surviving the Night Game, which I played earlier in the season trying to survive, Dawn of the Dead. So if you enjoy horror and you enjoy Rob, why not check that out too? It's 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 like double pleasure, double your fun, double mint twins. <laughs> Add Fear Bias uh, on Twitter or Instagram and you can look up the podcast Bitch I Ain't Scared on um, any podcast app. And you can always find the Radical Retro Rewind podcast, one word on Instagram. You can also find some exclusive videos I'm doing for action figures on Super Clash Video channel on youtube and i'll be doing exclusive radical and retro videos on there if you want to check out me doing that thank you again radical ones we will be back next week please enjoy the rest of the summer bye everyone goodbye okay well, that's excellent sorry dear i was miles away